Flicking balls, gotta flick them all. Woo! Yeah, flick that ball. Welcome to uh, Impact Gamers tutorial. This one is about the game's mechanic of flicking balls. A bit like Pokemon Go. Um, a student yesterday asked me to help him with this, and so I wanted to share a very quick way of doing it and the files if you want to try it yourself. So, in Click Team Fusion, um, go to your frame editor, and what we're going to need is we're going to need a ball. So, I'll just grab that from my other frame. Um, a nice background I'm going to put in. Oh, not that. Nice background I'm going to put in to let you know that April is happening at the 1st of April 2017 and you can sign up at that web link to learn some tutorials to make an app. So if this stuff is a bit complicated for you, start off with the April tutorial, learn it and then this stuff should be easy. Um, so we've got the ball, that's needed and we've got our enemy. Now I'm just going to make the enemy static because he's bouncing around when in the other frame and I'm just going to tell you that the ball is set to physics static movement and so if we run this frame ball drop down uh, oops I haven't got a physics object thank you fusion I don't I'm gonna borrow the same one here we go now here we go run the frame and the ball drops down okay so just gonna set some ooh, couldn't move that for a second just gonna set some Boundaries, so a new condition for the ball, its position, test position, those classic four arrows that point out of the white into the grey. If it tries to leave the play area, movement, uh, stop. And so we haven't got bounce because it's not a bouncing ball, but if we added some elasticity to it, we could make it bounce if we wanted. So we run it and it stops. So the mechanics is dead simple. Now we've got that. The mechanics is just based around we have a start and an end object. These are all active objects. Every these all these things, the ball, the enemy, and these are all active objects. I've got a physics engine in as well because I need it. But just active objects and these things are going to measure our click. And basically we're gonna say new condition. If the mouse, if it if you click with a left click, so we can use this on a tablet if we wanted to uh, make this for Android or for iOS. So if we click or tap, I want to position the start. Um, I want to, sorry, I want to position, I want to set its X coordinate to the X coordinate of the mouse, and then I want to set its Y coordinate position, set the Y coordinate to the Y coordinate of the mouse. So every time we click, if we run that, that little green target will move. And the red circle and the yellow circles are just so you can see where my mouse is. The red circle is when I click. Um, and But what actually is happening is Fusion is that green target is moving. Now, if you notice, if I hold, the green target only stays at the beginning of the click. And that is exactly what we want it to do. So we're going to use that to our advantage because we're going to say that when we're not clicking, we've released from a click, we want to place the stop end target, sorry, the start when we click and the end when we let go. So we haven't got an actual condition for this infusion. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to negate, which is make an opposite rule. So the mouse repeat while we're clicking. So that's the same as holding down. Do this while the mouse is held down. So if I right click on those words and negate, I get the red X. Um, and it means the opposite. So it means when the mouse isn't being pressed, then I want the same rule. Set the X position to the X of the mouse and the Y position is the Y of the mouse. X being across and Y being up and down on the screen. I'm just going to drag and copy it across. So if we run the frame, the red will be red will be following me. But if I click and pull, there we go. It moves across. Click and pull, click and pull. So I've now got something, a distance that I can measure and an angle that I can measure. A new condition when the green target is overlapping the ball that means we clicked on the ball and if we insert we want to check that the red target is not overlapping so we're going to choose overlapping the ball and then we're going to negate it to get not so the greens on the ball the reds not we've clicked and we have pulled we've got all the all the maths there already because it's the distance between and the angle between which is going to set our force so under physics because it's a physics 
static object, we can use physics. We can apply a force to the ball, and it's going to be uh, the distance at the moment, position. So we want the distance between the start and the position of the x coordinate of the end, and then make sure you include these triangular brackets and the position of the y coordinate at the end and the angle again we've got that because it's the position it's the angle of a vector between the start and the position of the x coordinate and the position of the y coordinate so if we test that out if we click and pull on the ball the ball's going to fire off in the direction now you may notice that it's not behaving properly that it's not obeying laws of gravity because it's like we've turned on a hoover and not turning it off it's getting sucked and pulled and it's going to keep on getting pulled and faster and faster because when we apply a force it doesn't turn off so we need to build something in to turn it off and I do that with the timer I fire an event after a given delay and I find that a tenth of a second or ten hundredths of a second as it is in fusion a tenth of a second is quite good and we need to name what it's going to do and we want to run the event stop so we need to make the event stop condition on event if stop happens make sure you spell it exactly the same oops not like that stop then we want to stop the force not stop the movement we want physics stop force right let's try that and then if we click and pull we the ball goes up the force stops and it drops now if you're having an issue that your ball's hardly moving at all, it will be to do with its density. Density is how much material is in an object. So if you had a cup that was made out of lead, it would weigh more than a paper cup. So the density, I think, starts at 30. And because the size of the ball, it means that there's a lot of material packed in it. And if you pull, uh, you can see it can pull as far hard as we can. Uh, it's not going to move. In fact, it's rolling out the way. Before, uh, there we go before we can throw it again. So I changed the density of ball down to three. Try anything, a zero is gonna be weightless, so don't bother with that, but anything above zero, uh, you can try it. And three worked quite nicely for the amount of pixels of my ball, which is about 60 or 80, 80 pixels, I think, in between that. So we can throw the ball, great. Now, you might notice that there's a problem, that if the ball lands on the start arrow again, let's see if I can do that properly, but, uh, there we go. If it lands on the start, let's restart that to show you properly. If I throw it up and it lands on the start, the condition will run again. So if I throw it up a little bit, there we go. It changed. The thing is, there's a bit of an issue when the ball lands back on the start. So if I throw it upwards directly and it lands back on, the start it will throw it again so what we need to do is we just need to move the position of it so after the ball's fired off we can move the position so that it's out of the way I'll just put it in the gray area out of the play area so now let's try firing the ball it's not very far Whoop, there we go let's try a bit further Whee. great well, I'll just make a condition. If the ball collides with another object, the, the enemy there, we can destroy it. So now we have our game. I can click and pull. Oh, I didn't flick it hard enough there. Click and pull. Whee. How exciting. Now, I've added lots of rules to this to make it a bit more advanced for those who like the advanced things. I've added some shininess to the ball. Um, and all I've done there is make it another active object that's placed on top. I've made the ball sh get smaller as it spends longer on the screen, and I've made it that the monster shrinks into the ball. Uh, so this is all downloadable at impactgamers.net forward slash flicking. But there you go, and then you can actually get it in. So I'll just quickly run through the rules if you want to have a look at them. This is now a bouncing ball object, um, so it bounces about, and then we've got a barrier. Now you can make it invisible at start, um, and that's useful. You can also, with the end targets and the start targets, turn off their visibility. I had it in an event, but you can just do it there. And that means that you can't see the pulling. Um, and so we've got rules to keep the monster in the top half. We've got a condition to, well, we've got a variable on the ball to know when it's thrown and when it's shrinking. 
so that we can add to that and when it's hit the monster because if it's hit the monster then the monster gets stuck to it so the position of the monster gets stuck to the ball uh, and if the ball leaves the play area um, when it's been thrown so when it's not been thrown it stops but when thrown is one uh, the ball gets destroyed and the shading gets destroyed so the shading um, is always following the ball uh, so it always follows the ball and the scale is set to the same scale as the ball so yeah you can look through that and you can build on that that's all available if you head over to impactgamers.net forward slash flicking so i hope you've enjoyed the video and i really hope that you sign up to april if you this is too advanced for you and you want to learn something more basic or you want to teach your children how to make apps in click team fusion sign up to april one tutorial every day over april it should be lots of fun and then in may we get to see the games that you've made okay take care have fun flicking balls that didn't really come out the right way okay Bye.